Hello, friends. I'm here today with Martha Hinojosa. Martha is the district receptionist for LISD and one of the faces of our one LISD community. As we observe Hispanic Heritage Month, I have asked Martha to join me in a conversation about the significance of this month for her and by extension for our entire community. Martha, welcome to On the Street. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, we are honored to have you today. And I'd like, I'm sure people can't wait to hear what you have to say. So I'd love just to jump right in. Sounds great. All right. So can you tell me about who you are as a person and as a professional? Where did you grow up? Uh, what is your most significant memory from your childhood? I'm a mother. Yeah. I'm a grandmother, a momo, and I'm a wife. Uh, would you say a, a momo? A momo. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love that. Yes. So how many children do you have? I have uh, two sons, and I have one uh, bonus daughter. And between my children, I have a total of 10 grandchildren. Wow. And so are they all in Texas or? Yes. Thankfully, they're all in Texas. Our daughter lives in Amarillo. Our two sons live in Liberty Leander. And uh, my daughter's an RN. Wow. My son's a fireman, and my other one installs elevators. Installs elevators? Yes, sir. That must be very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, because, I mean, we all get in elevators, but no one thinks about the fact that someone has to install this. And Correct. this is what he does. Correct. Wow. How long has he been doing that? He has been doing that now for probably 15 years. Wow, so he's pretty good at it. He's very well. Very, very trained. Um, very professional about installing his elevators, and it can get a little scary at times. Oh, I have no doubt. I mean, wow, that's amazing. I think you're the first person I've met who has a connection to a person who installs those. Yes. So once again, welcome to On the Street, Martha Hinojosa. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so what is your most significant memory about your childhood? My most significant memory is when we moved to Mason, Texas, I was born in Houston, and we moved to Mason when I was about nine years old. Okay. And as we were transitioning, I would love that we were able to go to the river, and it was James River in Mason, mm -hmm. Texas. Yeah. Uh, Mason is probably 43 miles north of Fredericksburg. Okay. I love Fredericksburg. Um, yes. And uh, there was... My cousins had this wonderful family, the Garzas, and they would always take us to the river, and mm. that is the best. Is that very calming? It's very calming, very clear water. Um, we never did worry about snakes during that time. I grew up in Wisconsin right along Lake Michigan, and so some of my best memories of my childhood are spending time with my family just watching the big ships out there and you know, on Lake Michigan, come and go. And my mother would pack sandwiches and we would spend hours just out there on the water. Mm -hmm. So I do have an appreciation for that as well. Yes. It's calming and it, it makes you reflect. Right. And you get a sense of perspective. Yeah, because you realize just the world is so big. So why did you decide to join LISD? What made you want to come and work for this well, district? So my husband and I, uh, we lived in Round Rock for a couple of years, and we decided to build a home in Cedar Park, Texas. And I continued to work in Round Rock ISD, and we were driving back and forth, mm -hmm. my, ch my two boys and I. Um, and then I decided, you know what? It's time for me to join LISD. So it, what I, year was that? That was in 19... 96, I believe. Wow. So you yes. remember Leander when it was a small, very, not very small, but a significantly it's smaller, smaller district. Yes. Exactly. And um, in, so in 1996, when I joined LISD, <clears throat> I was a elementary uh, instructional assistant. So you started as an IA? Yes. I never knew that about your yes. story. Yes. I yeah. worked under Kendra Schaefer, who is now Kendra Winans. Mm -hmm. I had the privilege of working <laughs> with her right before she retired. Right. Yes. And uh, I worked as an IA there. And then after that, I uh, transitioned into 
uh, I helped open up Baghdad Elementary. You did? Yes, back in 1999. Wow. I was the receptionist there. And then a couple of years later, I moved into the registrar position. Mm -hmm. But I just felt like we were finally at home, the boys and I were, wow. you know, because I wanted them to be in the same district that I was in. Mm -hmm. Um, it was nice uh, knowing that my children were uh, attending LISD schools. Uh, both of my boys graduated from Leanne, uh, Cedar Park High School. Wow. So, uh, and At that then... Point we had two high schools when they graduated? Right. Okay. So, yes, we only had Leander and Cedar Park High. Mm. So you And so my oldest growth. son was actually the first child to graduate from, uh, the first class to graduate from Cedar Park High School. That's pretty special. It is. That's pretty special. And um, then I was honored. I stayed home for seven months, but then I was honored and I applied for the district receptionist position. And what year was that? I applied in March of 2020. Okay. okay. Like two weeks before COVID hit. And you've been here ever since? Ever since then, yes, sir. And I am very, very happy with my position. Well, it shows. Your enthusiasm Thank is you. contagious. Yes. And just just to let you know that uh, being a receptionist has lots of different hats. And no one day is the same as the other day or the next day. Oh, Nothing is ever that. repetitive. I believe that. It's like being a receptionist. We were talking about this uh, about a week ago. You you have to be everything to everyone all the time. And that's a lot to carry. But you carry that very well because you were one of the first people I met when I got here. Thank you. And so it was your welcoming demeanor, your infectious smile, you know, your professionalism. It made me feel like my interview process was the right place for me to be right then. So thank you for that. Thank you. So what is the favorite part of your job currently, Martha? My favorite part of my job is helping uh, all of our clients that come in. Mm -hmm. For instance, we have uh, some clients, some new employees coming in who only speak mm -hmm. Spanish. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I help them in that way. I also enjoy helping um, the elderly right now when they come in for their um, gold cards. Mm, They're yes. so very appreciative, yes. which is the athletic pass. Mm -hmm. I enjoy pretty much everything. Not, like I've said before, nothing is repetitive. <laughs> and just seeing, um, you know, new people coming into mm -hmm. the district, mm -hmm. uh, welcoming them, them to the district. Um, and you've seen a lot of change over the years. I have mm -hmm. lots of changes. Yes. Lots so of changes. You, lots of growth. Yes, lots of growth. And you started with the district in 96. And you think about here we are in 2024, how much the district has changed. Um, I think in many ways... It is a much more diverse community, but it still, I believe, and you can speak to this if you like, has that thing that made Leander different and special. Do you think we still have that? Are we still that district where people say it's different here? I don't know. I mean, I know it, it's changed, mm -hmm. but I still feel, on my part, I still feel like we're still a community mm -hmm. in some ways. We're still uh, what you would call hometown feel. <laughs> yes, I know exactly what you mean. Mm -hmm. um, I Which I think is important to hold on to, right? Correct. Yeah, it is. I mean, because I think it's one of the things that makes Leander so special is that it is a big district, but it still smell, feels like a small town. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And so when you were in school, when you think back on your time as a student, Martha, did you have a favorite subject in school? I did. Was it history? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to be a shocker, but okay. uh, my favorite subject was ag. Um, wow. Yeah. I was on the radio team. You were? Yes, sir. I was on the dairy products team. 
<laughs> we traveled quite a bit to Texas A&M, to Texas State, and we competed quite often. Wow. Um, what did you like most about that experience? Um, it just, it was more, just the agriculture, mm-hmm. um, you know, the community was so farm, farming and ranching during yes. that time. Um, uh, I just felt like, you know, may, maybe one day I would be a rancher or a farmer, right. but, um, yes. My grandfather was a farmer in Mississippi. Yeah. And so I used to spend times, um, out there, you know, working with his, his livestock and he raised pigs. And so I remember that. And I remember he also grew corn. And so I remember all those things and just watching him. And I did at one point think I was going to be a farmer. That's a lot of work. I it have is a lot so of much work. respect for farmers. Especially I remember raising pigs, show pigs, mm. and attending. Um, Brandon her- Evans does that now. Yes. Yeah. And I remember going to all the stock shows, mm-hmm. um, taking our pigs, loading them up, getting them washed and combed and ready for the stock shows. It's a lot to do. It is. Yeah. So did you have a favorite teacher when you were in school? Actually, there were two, um, Jerry Bearden and J. Mark, and they were our ag teachers. Yeah. But um, they were more like, they were more more like a father figure. They always, you know, took Mm -hmm. care of us girls when we were on the trips, made sure that, you know, Nobody was going to harm us in any way, and they they um, they were genuine mentors and just great teachers. It sounds like yes, they are. They were. Wow. So when we think about here, we are in twenty twenty four, and we are observing slash celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. When you think about that, what comes to mind for you? So it comes. It's about histories. Mm -hmm. It's about our cultures of our American citizens who came from Central, South America, uh, Mexico. Um, And when I think about that, I think about festivities. Ballet Flocorico. What is that? That's a Mexican dance. Okay. Um. It's the girls who have their big, long, fluffy dresses. I've seen that, yes. And the gentlemen who are mm-hmm. dressed like in charro. And their posture is exactly. very erect, yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think of that. I think of the food, the gatherings. Family. Exactly, mm-hmm. yes. I love that you led with American citizens. I, I love that because... When you think about how our country is changing, we cannot lose sight of the fact that we're all Americans and that each of us brings something unique to our country that we should celebrate and learn from. So I love that you opened up with that Um, and the food and the festivities and the history. You know, as a historian, I don't think we can celebrate these months without looking at the history and learning from it. So I'm glad you included all that. Thank you. So why is it important, in your opinion, for the one LISD community to celebrate this month? I mean, you kind of talked about it, but is there anything else? Why is it important for us to just pause and celebrate this month? I just feel that, you know, at least I believe at least 40 percent of our population is Hispanic. Mm -hmm. And, And in truth, I think we should celebrate all, all holidays, um, mm-hmm. but, you know, we want to honor every, every individual's beliefs, yes. their cultures. Their story. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Their history. Yes. And I just feel as though um, when we're talking about the uh, Hispanic Heritage Month that mm-hmm. we celebrate it. You know, when I was um, teaching U.S. history, one of the areas of expertise that um, I developed was World War II. 
And the more that my demographics in my classroom changed, we saw more and more Latino students coming to the district that I worked in. So I wanted to connect my curriculum as much as I could to what I was seeing in my classroom. So it led me on this journey um, to research a group called the Aztec Eagles. They were a group of Mexican fighter pilots who were Mexican citizens, but volunteered to fly for the United States in World War II. And their leader was Lieutenant Colonel Rodriguez, and they were known as the 201st Fighter Squadron. They flew out in the Pacific in the Philippines towards the end of World War II. And being able to share my love of aviation through history with a group that most history books um, did not include when we talked about World War II was very powerful for me because, to your point, it extended that canopy of being an American over every single person who was sitting in my classroom and every single person has made a contribution to this country. So I will never forget learning about the Aztec Eagles, one of my favorite stories I like to share. So once again, it's all about history, right? Correct. (laughs) That it is. Well, I know I'm biased because I taught history for a long time, so (laughs) I'm freely owning that. So Martha, as as we close out our conversation, and thank you so much for being here today, Is there anything else you would like to share with the community about you and about your role? I mean, you truly are uh, one of the faces of our district, and so we're just honored that you sat down with us today. I just want to be open to the community. I want them to feel that at any time they can come, they can call us. Um, My cohort, Ashley Frick, and I are available. Yes. For anyone at the time. Well, I've seen your workspace just flooded with people, and you are always calm, always professional, and always just very welcoming. And sometimes I marvel at how you're able to do all that because it is very busy down there some days. It is. So we're very fortunate to have you. So I want to thank you again for being our guest today. I think our discussion around Hispanic Heritage Month will bring some value to our listeners, learning about you and your story, and how we try to honor all stories here in LISD. I have had the pleasure of working with you for almost three years now, and it has been one of the highlights of my career. You are the reason why when we say that one LISD is a family, we mean it because of people like you. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for having me.